Cameras are like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get. That's, that's not true. That's not true. Buying a new camera is just like buying a new pair of shoes. <laughs> it depends on what you're using them for. <laughs> that brings up the conversation of today, which is things you should think about before picking a camera. So here's the line of cameras that I had when I first started out to now and how my line of thinking kind of changed from then to now as well. The first camera that I got when I was quote unquote serious about photography was a Canon Rebel T5i. I thought I was really into photography and I thought that's what I really wanted to do. And that worked well until I figured out that I wanted to do video. I shot a music video and it wasn't great. It was really shaky, it didn't look great quality wise. And then I looked up like video cameras to like go into that direction of, oh, I think I wanna shoot music videos. So right after that, what was really popular was a Panasonic G7. Used it for multiple, multiple videos. It got my first start with like an actual video first camera. I outgrew it, got a GH5. GH5 is still a legend, people use it today. But I got a GH5 on every shoot for about, probably about two or three years until again, I felt like I outgrew it and I got multiple cameras. So then I got a Confinity Mavo Super 35, it's a cinema camera, it's right there. And then I had a Canon EOS R. The Canon EOS R was supposed to be my content creation camera and the cinema camera up there was supposed to be like music videos and other high quality content. And that's kind of how I already use it now, today. The Canon EOS R was great until I started trying to use it as a B camera to that camera. And then it just kind of fell apart. The Canon EOS R was an amazing photography camera and that's kind of what got my start in photography. So then I started realizing, okay, for this next camera, I needed to be really good with video and match up to the, my cinema camera. And I wanted to be decent at photography. I got the Panasonic S1. That's kind of my whole line of what cameras I got and when and why. Let's roll with that shoe analogy. <laughs> it depends on what you're using them for. It was really stupid, yes. I agree, but it's kind of true. You got running shoes, you got hiking shoes, you got basketball shoes, you got track spikes, you got soccer cleats. You wouldn't wear running shoes on a basketball court unless you want to twist your ankle, right? Yeah, so what sense does it make to go to Foot Locker or something and then get some running shoes because you want to start playing basketball at the Y? It don't make no sense. It's the same with cameras. If you're only interested in content creation and don't really care about becoming a cinematographer or a filmmaker or even lighting and all that, I wouldn't tell you to get like a Sony FX3 or a RED camera, RE camera. I wouldn't tell you to get any of those. I'll tell you to get a completely different line of camera. And then even if, let's say, let's stay in the Sony bracket. Sony makes a whole bunch of different cameras for different entry levels. So if you want it to be like a cinematographer, but you're just starting out, I'd probably tell you to get the A7S III. If you want to be a videographer, I would also tell you to get the A7S III. If you want to build out your camera and you know make it look like a cinema camera or whatever, the FX3 is perfect for that. If you're just into content creation and you're not into all that, maybe the Sony ZV-1, the Sony ZV-10 is a good choice for you. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't get an FX3 if you're just doing like makeup videos. Doesn't make sense, you're gonna overcomplicate it for yourself. If you're into makeup videos and you wanna make it cinematic and you like really care about the quality, then maybe I would get a A7S 3 or something. You invest a little bit more into the camera and what you are interested in. That also puts us at, what are you using the camera for? Same if you're into videography, see what type of videography you're into. If it's events, does it make sense to have an FX6? Maybe if you're doing wedding, does it doesn't make sense to have a, you know, a red camera. Maybe there are cameras like the Osmo, the pocket three, uh, a drone. There's 360 cameras. There's a lot of different cameras that you can use to tell a certain story, but I wouldn't recommend as your main camera. And for a lot of content creators, I think that your phone is good enough. I think the phone has a really good quality to get on any social media platform. And honestly, there's plenty of professional iPhone photographers, iPhone videographers. Now, that's a niche of its own, and I know nothing about it, but I know that it's a thing. I know that there's people who professionally shoot with their phone. 
I'd say you'd only need to upgrade if you want more quality or you want to add on to your camera or if you have an interest in, like I said, cinematography. If you see a creator using a specific camera and you're like, oh, I want that type of quality because I like his or her videos. I want that type of quality. I'm gonna buy this camera. It ain't the camera, it's the creator. So you have to invest a lot more into the image that you see than just the camera. For example, this scene right here with no lights looks like this. Yeah, and even if I just had one huge light in front of me, it will look like this, you know? So there's a lot of things that go into an image than just the camera. The camera is the quality of it overall, but for the most part, the creator puts things around the camera in order for the image to look good. So learn the camera that you have first and then understand why you wanna upgrade your camera in the first place. If you're a YouTuber that cares about cinematography, for example, or if you wanna become a professional cinematographer or maybe be known for cinematography or maybe get hired as a cinematographer, look at the cameras that are good evolutions of one another. I think the Panasonic line does really well at that, but I'm just a Panasonic fan. Like I said, I went from the Panasonic G7 to the GH5. I have an S1 now. If you're brand loyal, you can't go wrong with any brand. It's just knowing which camera to pick and which one you wanna grow with as you grow in your career. You have to know what you want in a camera, what you want for your career, what do you want for your content, and then you can head down that line. You know, on TikTok, you'll be like, 4K camera. No brand, no nothing, it's just a cheap little drop shipping item. No, what, what's the point, why, no. That's like getting a camera just to say that you have a camera. Your phone is most likely better than that camera. Don't get influenced by the trends, don't get influenced by what you see on TikTok shop or Amazon for $60. Do your research, know what you want. If you want my opinion on what you should get, let me know below. Link me to some of the stuff you made in the past or what you're planning to do or X, Y, Z, and I'll help you out. That's all. That's where I'm gonna leave y'all today. If y'all have questions, comments, if y'all wanna have a conversation, leave some comments below. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe so that you can be tuned in to my next drop and make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok and I'll see y'all later. Once upon a time in the bustling town of Creativia, there lived a young content creator named Trendy Tim. Tim was obsessed with following trends, constantly chasing after the latest fads in hope of staying relevant. One day, he stumbled upon the trendiest of cameras he had ever seen and hastily bought it, only to discover it was trash. Tim sought guidance from a wise old owl named Victor. Ollie taught Tim to listen to his heart and forget about following trends. As Tim embraced his own unique vision, that camera he once thought was a dud sprang into life, capturing images more vibrant than ever before. Tim realized that true creativity comes from within. And from that day on, he became known as the most beloved content creator on TikTok and in Creativia, inspiring others to follow the dreams and embrace their true selves and to never buy a camera from TikTok shop.